So that's the lysogenic cycle, or the choice to go into the lysogenic cycle. And the lytic cycle is going to be a little different. So in the lytic cycle, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. In the lytic cycle, we're going to have more crow around. And this crow protein is going to also be able to bind to OR and OL, just like C1 was able to. But now, instead of activating transcription of PL and PRM, like lambda did, it's now going to inhibit those. So now we're going to have inhibition of PL and inhibition of PRM. This is going to have the effect of lowering the amount of lambda protein in the cell. And since lambda protein isn't around to inhibit anything else, we're going to have the production of lots of these lytic cycle genes. So these lytic cycle genes are going to go up. So the choice between the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle is really going to be ruled by how much lamb do we have around versus how much crow we have around. And all of this is going to be dependent on the amount of C2. If we have a lot of C2 around, we're going to upregulate lambda. And if we don't have a lot of C2 around, then the crow that is normally made is not going to be inhibited. The C2 is a very unstable protein. And the C2, like I mentioned before, needs C3 around to help activate it, or to help, sorry, keep it stable. So the C2 protein is easily degraded by cellular proteases, and these cellular proteases normally get made by E. coli. The C3 can help stabilize this, but it can't stabilize all of the C2. So the C2 can still get degraded by these cellular proteases. So the system seems a little bit crazy. You have proteases around, and this is going to make this actual lytic versus lysogenic cycle decision but it actually makes sense because we actually get higher amounts of proteases when there are good E. coli growth conditions. Growth conditions. So when there are good E. coli growth conditions, we tend to see more proteases in the E. coli and these more proteases in the E. coli will degrade C2, and that will lead to low production of lambda. That means that there's going to be more crow around, and this will go into the lytic cycle. So higher levels of proteases due to good E. coli growth conditions leads to the conditions that give us the lytic cycle for our bacteriophage. And this makes sense. When we've got favorable conditions for E. coli growth, this lambda phage can make lots and lots of copies of itself and go infect lots of other healthy E. coli cells. On the other hand, when nutrients are limiting, we're under starvation conditions for E. coli, these cellular proteases are really more or less inactive, and so they don't degrade C2 very much. We make a lot of lambda protein, and we have very low amounts of crow. This is going to be regulated both by the, um, both by the uh, operator region, um, as well as by this anti crow that's being made over here off of PRE. So under these conditions, we have our high C2. We repress crow with lambda as well as with anti crow. And this all makes sense. Now we go into the lysogenic cycle where uh, we can have the bacteriophage sitting as a prophage waiting for good environmental conditions to be, um, to, to come about.